Hi everyone, welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. I was gonna wait a couple of days and record on Saturday, but I thought my heart is full, like a vessel ready to be poured out. And I thought, why keep anything good for myself that Jesus has given me? After all, doesn't he always tell us to give? Whatever we have, give it away. And the that's the water wheel. We're water wheels of the Lord. Amen. So here I am. So before I get started, I just really want to welcome everybody back today. I want you to know how much it means to me to be here and to share with you and you guys share your life with me, your lives. And many of you do through emails and comments. And I want you to know how much it deeply touches me, many of the things you share and for your support in prayer and even for the support that you give me through Patreon and, and you know, all that, that support is what I'm trying to say. And your friendship and your love in the Lord is by far the great support because it strengthens me. And we all need each other. We need to encourage one another as we see the day approaching. But I just wanted to take the time to just humbly thank everybody that supports this little green pasture because it does belong to Jesus. And we are his, I'm his. But I just wanted to extend a great heartfelt thank you to everybody, to every one of you, because I love you and you mean so much to me. And it always makes me happy to be here and share. <laughs> so I'm going to begin by praying, by giving honor to Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I thank you so much. For your son, Jesus Christ, I thank you for you, Father, the love of the Father. That, Lord, your love surpasses all love that we could ever know in this earth. And I want to thank you for the words of John. In the book of First John that says they are of the world and they are of the children of darkness. But we are of God. And I thank you, Father, for giving us your son and for giving us this day. And I give you myself as a little child and that you would lead me out and instruct me in the words and the things you want me to say, being moved in my heart and in my spirit. For my eyes are upon you and my heart is fixed upon you. In Jesus name, amen. Well, as many of you know, this is called really Heavenland Devotions. It first started out as, and always will be, Joni Stahl's Field Notes. And the reason why I call it Joni Stahl's Field Notes, for many of you that may not know, is because everything I share and teach and give to you is what I've just simply learned in the fields of this world that God has shown me just living in it following the great shepherd and all my experiences become my own therefore they become real and therefore it has life in it so and the reason why i call it heavenland devotions which one day i would love to just nail it down to just one <laughs> one thing but i added heavenland devotions because i am one of those believers that I am completely committed to daily devotions, no matter what happens, no matter what day it is, no matter what, because I find such great life and joy in meeting with Jesus Christ every single morning. And I mean every single morning. And so most of what I teach and share is what I've learned from him that very morning, unless he has something else he wants to say. And so that brings me to today, to the things I wanna to share with you. 
So I'm going to begin. I just wanted to say that because some of there's a lot of new subscribers and you're wondering why is it three things? <laughs> so I hope that will satisfy those questions. So anyways, here I am and I'm going to begin. So yesterday afternoon, I was common average day. And all of a sudden, I started to feel a strange and bizarre, a bizarre kind of, maybe not bizarre, just I'll use the word strange. I felt a strange insecurity. And I detected, I didn't detect the enemy. But I know that within ourselves, we can, we don't always need the help of the enemy, who's never a help. But sometimes just in ourselves, we feel insecure for no reason at all. And I think that has to do with old things of the past and how things are going to play out in the future and the hundred what ifs. So on a very human side, yes, but there was no reason for me to feel insecure. I wasn't afraid. Everything's happy. Everybody's fine. Everybody's healthy. But I detected insecurity. And so I put it away for a while, but as the day began to wear on, towards the end of the day mostly, all of a sudden I felt, not afraid, but like I felt that I just, I felt my complete humanity. But it grew through the night. So when I got up this morning, I sat down in the living room in the dark. And as I was sitting there, I was praying for people I love and all that. And all of a sudden, I just came to the end of the prayer. And I said to him, Lord, I'm just going to go on now. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read my Bible because I never have enough time to do things. And I want to put you in priority and I want to read the word. So as I opened my Bible and I began to read the word within seconds, I just looked up and to just looked up and I said, and I, and I, and with tears and I don't sob before the Lord. I mean, there are times I have, oh yeah, there are many times, but there was something happening within me. And so I started crying and I just said, Lord, I said, I feel so empty. I feel so dumb. I feel like I have nothing, that there's nothing that I have or that I am. And it wasn't from the enemy. And it wasn't. It was, it was a God of moving in me. I don't know if this is making any sense to you, but I knew. He wanted something out of me. And so the reason I started sobbing is because it was something that broke inside of me. And I, I had been wanting to tell him these words before, but I was giving him sound bites here and there that didn't add up to any kind of a prayer. I would just tell him, Lord, I feel weak today, or Lord, I feel this, or I feel this. But all of a sudden, I cried like a baby. I just, I cried and I said things like a little baby but it was in me and that's what he wanted. And I said to him, Lord, I said, I feel so dumb. I said, I feel like there is nothing that I could ever, ever do or give or be or accomplish or purpose. I said, I am before you, Lord, and I feel just this emptiness. And there wasn't a self-pity at all. It was an absolute sense and knowing in the presence of the Lord how absolutely those words are true, that I, we are but grass, and that my life truly is only our life. But I'm saying I because it was happening to me. But I felt it. I mean, he made me to really feel it that my life is but a vapor that is here for a little time and then vanisheth the way. And as I prayed before him, I just sobbed and I said, Lord, look at me. I said, just take one good look at me. I said, 
I'm only alive because of you. And if there's anything I have, it's because of you. Even these videos that I make are things because of you. Because of things I've learned from you and experienced from you and saw you do and heard you say and influenced me. I come with nothing. And it was the first time that I just appeared like that before him. And I wept and I cried until I felt it all come out of me. And I was even saying things like, cause there was like little fears in my heart, but they're common fears that all of us have. They weren't there by the devil, but by things of a uh, human anticipation. And so as I began to read his word, I read in Psalm 76, where it talked about the rich. And David was uh, looking at that saying, why do the rich, they, they have happiness, they, they have no problems, they, they have more than heart could wish. Uh, they leave everything to their children. Um, and, but the whole thing is so beautiful because it winds itself into, and then I saw their end. And that they, there's an end to those people and we all hope for their salvation. But let me just keep going without trying to be so perfect in everything I'm saying, because I felt that Jesus was saying to me before this, be yourself, say it like you want to say it. Don't try to appease every hearer. Just say it. And so even before I was preparing this, I was getting notes and things I thought I could get from the Bible. And I heard the Lord say in my heart, can't you speak for yourself? Speak about what you saw today, what I showed you and what I said to you. And he allowed me to come up with a couple of verses. I think he didn't care. Not that he so much didn't allow. But anyways, let me get back. So I was saying, I was saying, Lord, if something should happen to my husband and what would that look like for me and where would I go and how would I do it? And and, and it was, and I, I guess it was like all these little simmering things within me. <clears throat> and those are the things that came out. And so when I was reading that chapter 76, at the end of that chapter, he says, whom have I in heaven but thee? There's none on earth I desire beside thee. My heart and my flesh faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And I read through the Psalms that I wanted to read. And then I went into Second Kings. And then I saw, I was in Second Kings chapter 4. And it began with, and there was a certain woman who was a wife of the son of one of the prophets who had died. See, Jesus was speaking to me this morning. And she was in, in that, her husband was in debt. And the creditors came and told her she needed to pay all that debt. Many of you are familiar with this story, but it so moved me today. And so she went to Elisha and she told him what was going on. And he said, the first thing, what do you have in your house? And she said, a pot of oil. That's all I got. And then, you know, the rest of the story. But if you don't, it says that he said, go into your, he goes, go to your neighbor's borrow ve some vessels and not a few and go in with your sons shut the door and pour out and she kept pouring it out and she kept pouring it out she had her vessels all full filled and she asked if there were any more vessels and his her one of her sons said no there's no more vessels and then elisha came and he said now take those take that oil and sell it and pay off the creditors. And the word stuck out to me. And then go and live. Go and live. You and your sons. And see, the Lord spoke to me in every point that I cried out to him this morning. And those words, go and live, meant so much to me this morning that I didn't have to wait until something like that may or may not ever happen. In other words, Jesus was speaking in his living word, go and live. 
you and your children. Go and live. And which brings me around to this, that at my end of my devotions, I was in Luke. And I was in Luke chapter 9, and it was a story about when all the disciples were together and they asked among themselves who it was that would be the greatest. And I believe they were in the home of Peter. They were in Capernaum. That's what I believe because Mark has the same account. But this is what I received from the Lord today. I'm so hoping this speaks to you. But he said, he took a child. It says, and Jesus perceiving their thought, the thoughts of their heart, took a child and set him by him. And when I saw that, immediately I heard the Lord speak in my heart. And he said, do you see that? Who did he take to set beside him? And I answered in my heart, that little child, Lord. And I heard him say to me, can you be a little child? Because when you become like that little child, I'll set you beside me. And I'll take care of the rest. And he went on to say, whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. See, this morning I was saying, Lord, I said, look at me. I feel so dumb. And I'm just going to open open up wide here, right? Like, come on, we know each other now. Like, I'm not going to try to beat around the bush and try to be perfect. And this isn't for me to have everybody go, oh, no, Joan, you're really good at what you do. Don't do that. That's not what this is for. I'm just pouring it out, okay? And I'm just being open. And I said, I feel so dumb. I said, when I do my videos, sometimes I get stuff wrong and I stumble all over myself and I'm getting older and my mind isn't as fresh and sharp as it used to be and I get things wrong. I said, and Lord, I feel so little. I feel like I'm the slowest car on the freeway and every car is passing me by at full neck speed. My little green pasture is this little place that I'm in and everything is so little. And I just said, but there is this, I just feel I have nothing. And it wasn't, again, like I was just pathetic, sad. I wasn't sad. I wasn't self-pitying. But it was the Lord who was meeting me in this place. And it takes me to Daniel 10 because I want to talk about Daniel. I want to talk about uh, three different things in the Bible. You see, many of us, I want to talk about prayer because, see, God will bring you to a place where you feel that, just like I did. And I thanked him so much because I received such great grace upon me today. I was so happy at the end of how he had spoken to me in his word. And it was in prayer. Do you understand the beauty, the bouquet of prayer? How it starts little and it expands. And how there is this amazing and potent and powerful relationship connection that we have through the simplest thing where we open up our mouth and we breathe back the breath of life to Jesus Christ, to our God, to our Father in heaven. And we can cry like a little child. And that's what he's saying. And the Lord spoke to me because I was saying to the Lord, I feel so dumb. I feel like everything I say most of the time is I don't know who it's reaching. But the Lord said to me, and those scriptures came alive in me, he, I'll set you beside me. And when I heard him say, can you become like that little child? I said, I can, Lord. He said, because I set them beside me. I set those that become like little children beside me. And when I send them out like you to speak, that he that receiveth, you receiveth me in the simplest little things I share. You know, there was a day back in my life 
where I was always teaching these hard lessons, you know, and like chalkboard lessons and step by step and line by line and precept by precept. But the Lord has developed in me a flowing brook of living waters. You know why? Because Jesus, I believe through me as his vessel wants to comfort you. And he wants you to pray to him and he wants you to come and talk to him. And I'm going to say this because it says in Daniel 10, 8 through 13, Daniel says, therefore, I was left alone. And I saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. And I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I had heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the God, thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. You know, he said, from the day you set your, from the day, from the first day, you set your heart to understand. He wasn't even praying yet. And isn't that what we do? We, we, we find ourselves like, look at him. He was saying, he was saying, I was left alone. I, I had this vision and he's in the Lord and he's seeing things God is showing him, but he's in his presence. And he said he had remained no strength left in him. And all of his beauty was turned into corruption in the sight and presence of the Lord. And he had no strength. Now, I'm not trying to say I was experiencing what Daniel was, but it was something like that. It was something like that. And then I was allowed to hear the voice of his word speaking to me from the living word and in my heart by his spirit. And his hand touched me and he raised me up again and he caused me to stand. And now unto thee, unto you, I am now sent in a sense. He said when he stood up, he stood trembling. You know, God wants us to feel that. God wanted me to feel that. He doesn't want me to feel any of my own strength, which is corruption. A detachment from God. God wants us to feel and to know how great he is, how almighty he is. But when he said that angel came that first day and said from the first day, he let us know you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself before the Lord. And don't we do that? Don't we, in a sense, chasten ourselves before the Lord? There's something we want from the Lord. There's something moving in us. And so we're setting our heart to understand, our mind to understand what's happening to me. There's something moving in me. And you begin to chasten yourself before the Lord. You're not hungry anymore. You don't really feel like eating because something's churning inside of you. Something is moving inside of you. And what seems comforting before is like not comforting at all and you want to be alone with the lord and he goes on to say your words work your words were heard and i am come for your words and of course the prince of the kingdom of persia he said he withstood me 21 days but lo michael one of the chief princes came to help me 
and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Do you understand how powerful your prayers are? Because there are angelic hosts, archangels. Gabriel's one of them. Michael is one of them. And there's others because it says one of the archangels in that chapter, in the chapter 11 too, that our prayers, Satan fights against our prayers, but there's nothing he can do to the saint that turns to the Lord. There's nothing he can do. No mightiest Satan's angels, nothing they can do. But you see, there's this is for us for the rest of our life to understand. This isn't just written as a historical event, and I'm so glad we have it. But in a sense, is this not really a word for all of us? Let me go further. In Genesis 24, Abraham didn't uh, have, I mean, Isaac, Abraham was getting old. He wanted his son Isaac to have a wife. And he said, look, you need to go. You need to go and you need to go where I'm from. And you, please go look. To, you know, he was sending him to his family's house. He sent his son. He said, look, not his son. He sent Eliezer, which was like a son to him. And he said, it was his servant. Go and find a wife from among my people. And he made him swear. He put his hand under his th under Abraham's thigh that he would find one only from the family line. And so he went. And as he went, he prayed. And in Genesis 24, verse 15, it says, And it came to pass before he had done speaking, and he was asking God, I pray that whoever shall first come forth. He stopped at a well. And he said, as he was praying, he was going toward a well. He said, that whoever will come out to the well and shall offer me water and offer my camels water and provender, he said, that will be the one. Then it says, and it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And she did exactly as he asked the Lord if she does these things. And then it was all done and she did all those things. It says, and the man bowed down his head, verse 26 and 27. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. And he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And as he prayed before, and I didn't, I didn't uh, add it, but he asked the Lord to prosper him in his way. And he told God, this is what I need to see in order for me to know. See, there's all kinds of ways we'll come to the Lord with that. We ask him to do things for us and he'll honor that. He doesn't honor the ones that just want to ask for curiosity. But he'll honor that if you come to him with a pure and full heart and you say, Lord, if you do this for me, then I'll know he'll do it. But notice it said, before he had done speaking, here she came, Rebecca. Before, while he was speaking. I know in the millennial kingdom, this will go on to those who will live during that time in Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And I say, this is a message for us. You see, I think a lot of times, and it dawned on me, that a lot of times, most of the time, we get discouraged in prayer for things we've been waiting so long for. People we want to saved and to be born again. Places or things that have been in our hearts that we want to do, whatever it is, deep longings, the waiting upon the Lord. You see, Daniel didn't know that 21 days that an angel would show up. 
But you know what? An angel doesn't need to show up to me and you. He showed up to Daniel and told him, and that was Gabriel. And Gabriel was the same angel that appeared to Mary and said, blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. He said, you're going to give birth to the savior of the world. And Gabriel is the angel over the body of Christ. Just as Michael is the prince exclusively over Israel. And I say, Gabriel, he said something to Daniel that I say, yes, but there's something there for us. Daniel, just like Elijah, who was a man with like passions as we are. And so that tells me how swift God is to hear your prayer. And that the waiting on him is because a lot of times God is setting up times and seasons and he's got to move in the material world. He's got to move people and places and things. And he's got to perfect timing. And so therefore, when we pray godly prayers, God hears those prayers. Notice it says, and he touched me, a hand touched me. You know, a hand touched me today. I'm not saying I felt a hand touch me, but his hand touched me. And now I'm here today to tell you that if, if you really, really hear this message, your heart will be lifted up. I think of also too today, that scripture came to mind in Ephesians 3.20. For he will do exceeding abundantly beyond all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh within you. And I said to the Lord while I was sitting there, exceeding abundantly beyond. I said, isn't that not an invitation to, to really look to God to be glorified in greater things? To ask him for. I mean, to really say, Lord, forget what I think, but I pray for what you think in this situation the exceeding, the abundantly, the beyond. That's what I wanted to tell you today. Don't be discouraged, be encouraged. He said he will. And look at me. I may be all that I think that I am in that right and godly sense. That Christ will become all in all. Who fills all things. And is in all. And just like again. In 1 John. It says, let me just read it because it's so good. It says, little children, no, uh, let me see here. <laughs> I don't know why is it, you know, like when you try to find stuff, you can't find it. It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And over here it says, in chapter four, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. And over here it says the same thing in chapter five, 19, and we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. 
we are of God. All the rest are of the world. And they speak of the world and they hear of the world. But we are of God. And we are his little children. And we will become little children that we may stand by him and bless us and take us up into his arms and cause us to be prospering, prospering in our journey. And like Elisha say, said to that woman at the well, what do you have? A pot of oil. It's like Jesus said to me, what do you have, Joni? I said, a pot of oil by the Holy Spirit. Go and live, you and your sons. And he says that to you today. What do you have? If you have that pot of oil, then you have his life living in you. Go and live. Go and live. Amen. Let us go forth. Let us go forth and live. We are of God.